I never wish to do harm to any pony. I'm leaving Ponyville. Scootaloo's serious declaration took her two friends totally by surprise. They had expected to spend the day playing together and crusading to their heart's contempt. Not that Scootaloo would announce them she would be going away. What do you mean you're leaving? You mean for some holidays or something? I'm just leaving forever. I wanted to come and say goodbye. I've got to go now. Wait! You, you can't just leave us like that. Aren't we your friends anymore? Yeah, but what have we done to you? What's going on all of a sudden? The question was more than pertinent. Not only was Skulu's behavior really strange and her seriousness almost frightening, but she was wearing a dress, which they thought she would never do on her own will. This was asking many questions that they wanted answers to. We have the right to know. Maybe we could help you. Scootaloo looked at them, and a huge wave of sadness seemed to submerge in her eyes. I can't tell you. Believe me, you really don't want to know. I don't want you to know. The Pegasus was about to cry. That simple fact terrified her two friends. Skulu had almost never shown any tears in public, preferring to hide behind anger or hatred, not to look weak in the eyes of others, or more importantly, in her own eyes. Well, we will be the judge of that. Just tell us what it is. But the Pegasus clearly was not ready to speak even if she probably wanted to. So Sweetie Belle thought of another approach and proposed to her friend to at least stay a little longer for one last cup of tea together as a departure party. She was able to convince Scootaloo and they sat around the table with the hot flavored water in front of them. Where are you going? So we can come visit once in a while. I don't know, as far away as possible. Those words were too caricatural, even for the filly, not to understand that Skulu had probably done something wrong, and did not want to bear the consequences of her acts. In the end, it was probably only a big overreaction. A strange one, but still nothing too serious with some luck. Say, uh, if we are going to see you ever again, could you stay a little longer and help us tidy up the house? To her surprise, Scootaloo accepted. She exchanged a look with Sweetie Belle, and they both smiled. It probably wasn't as serious as they feared it would have been. The three feelies spent some time fighting the dust and rearranging what little furniture they had, and it seemed that Scootaloo was slowly relaxing and coming back to them. Sometimes, she would even smile, as you do when you think back on a good joke. But some other times, she would grimace, as if something was still bothering her heavily. The night came, and Scootaloo was still with them, proving their actions had been effective. To pursue with the plan, Sweetie Belle and Apple Bloom engaged in a discussion about the only subject they were sure would work. What cutie mark they were going to get one day. I heard about something called quantum physics. Maybe if we can figure out what it is, I could become a quantum or physicianist or something. Did you know that some ponies spend their whole life writing stories? Wouldn't it be nice to just stay at your home and write all day long? You mean like an essay for school? That seems like the most boring job ever. And eventually, what they awaited happened when Scootaloo took the initiative to speak. But her words were not the expected ones, as there was no cutie mark proposition, but a strange question instead. 
Say, do you think that if you get your cutie mark and you don't like it, you can go crusading to find a new one? Her two friends looked at each other with the same surprised and lost expression on their faces. Why would any pony want to change their cutie mark? Yeah, yeah, a cutie mark tells you who you really are and what you are meant to do with your life. I mean, why would you want to change who you truly are? When I get my cutie mark, she will be so awesome, and I most certainly would never want any other just like my sister. But would it just theoretically be possible in your opinion if the pony just didn't want the cutie mark she had gotten? Like, let's say if Apple Bloom was to get a rock as a cutie mark. Why would I get a rock as my cutie mark? I don't have anything to do with rocks. I'll get my cutie mark for something great and amazing. She is right, you know. I don't know any pony who would like to change their cutie mark. It would just be plain stupid. It's not stupid! Her two friends backed away a little bit. They did not expect such a reaction. Still reassured about the retrieved calm, they began to discuss again. Okay, if we accept that, for some reason a pony would want to change their cutie mark, and I still think no pony ever would, then they probably couldn't. Because the cutie mark says who they are, no pony can change who they really are. It was logical. A cutie mark truly does represent a pony's destiny, and there was not much point trying to fight one's own destiny. Even magic had no impact on cutie marks, as Apple Bloom had had the opportunity to experiment at least two times with Twilight and Zakora. Sweetie Belle agreed. It was vain for a pony to try and go away from their destiny. But Scootaloo was not sharing that option. You're wrong. It must be possible to change it. It has to be. But why? Why do you bother about that? Unless... And just saying those words, Apple Bloom understood, just at the same time as Sweetie Belle did, what it was all about. Scootaloo! You got your cutie mark? In her opinion, it was a great thing, something worth being celebrated. But obviously, the Pegasus was not thinking the same way. But she didn't deny what was true. She had indeed gotten her cutie mark. So what is it? Is it why you're wearing a dress today? Scootaloo nodded. I can't show it to you. I won't. It's not mine. It's not me. I don't want this cutie mark. Oh, come on. You can't just not show your cutie mark to your two best friends. Is your cutie mark related to your difficulties for flying? Is that what's bothering you? That made Scootaloo laugh. But it was a genuine and happy laugh. <laughs> You're really happy for me, aren't you? Of course we are. <sighs> I really don't deserve good friends like you, you know? Until the very end, you'll have been the best I could have ever hoped for. Caring? Joyful? It's true when you say that you don't know what you've got before you've lost it. Hey, you haven't lost us. We are still here, and we are still your friends if you accept our friendship. I really must leave now. It has been a pleasure and honor knowing you two. But Sweetie Belle was not ready to let her friend go away like that. Wait just a moment there. You can't go like that. Not after what you've said. I'm sure that you don't have to go like you say. You're overreacting, that's all. Just show us your cutie mark and let us share what is really bothering you like true friends do. Scootaloo thought hard and long about that. Her friends could very clearly see that she was fighting inside her mind over two opposite wishes in a big mix of different emotions. 
They just didn't know what was at stake. They only hoped for the best. You really want to see my cutie mark? Of course we do. Even if I put you into danger? When she heard the word danger, Sweetie Belle hesitated. She wasn't sure if she was truly ready to face any real danger, or if it was wise to go blindly where it could be dangerous. But Apple Bloom decided for her. I said, of course we do. Are you deaf or something? Applejack's sister, just as Applejack herself, was a strong pony. Even if only a filly, she was not frightened by just words. All right. And for some reason, she smiled at that moment. She moved to the door and shut it, standing between the door and her friends. Then she took her dress away and showed the most atrocious cutie mark the two other fillies had ever seen in their lives. I got it this morning. I didn't want it. It's not who I wanted to become, but it just all happened too fast. And now, I can't come back. Not anymore. But what is it? It's the cutie mark that says who I'm really supposed to be. My destiny that I despise, but my destiny nonetheless. It's the cutie mark I received when I ended the destiny of another pony. One I loved above all others. You... You mean... She will never fly ever again. She won't ever smile to me and she will never be able to hug me anymore. Because of me. Only because of the despicable me. A silence ensued. Neither Sweetie Belle nor Apple Bloom knew how to react. This was just off chart. Something no pony was prepared to face. And the worst was yet to come. You don't even know why I stayed with you. It wasn't just because I was happy to be with you. I needed to leave because I feel the need to hurt you too. I was just enjoying the thought of how I would harm you and dispose of you. Scootaloo's words were ringing like a death knell. With passion and madness, along with a sadness, a huge, incredible, and powerful sadness. The three fillies remained quiet. There was no way out. Scootaloo was blocking the door, and her friends could see that they wouldn't have time to escape through the window. They would have to fight, and probably lose, which meant losing absolutely everything. That was a fight they were not prepared for. Apple Bloom was not ready, but in her mind, and for her pride, she was willing to accept that ultimate confrontation. She would make her big sister proud and prove that she was worthy of the Apple family. But Sweetie Belle got that they would have probably no chance in a frontal fight with some pony whose special talent was putting her at a disproportionate advantage over them. Would they be able to escape the house? It was night outside, and they would probably lose the chase. And even more, she didn't want to fight, because it would have meant hurting Scootaloo. And she didn't want to hurt her friend. At the time being, she only wanted to help her. Harvesting a courage she had no idea she even possessed, she came closer to Scootaloo, and with a very gentle and caring voice, spoke to her. It's okay, Scootaloo. I understand. 
I won't fight you. I'm here to help. The Pegasus was surprised, but ready to counter any trick. After all, she had become a professional. If that's the choice you want to make, then I won't oppose you. I don't want to live in a world where you wouldn't be my friend anyway. Apple Bloom saw the scene, and her flow of adrenaline dropped. Suddenly, she understood that she didn't want to fight either. I won't fight you either. If that's who you have decided to be, then I guess that I can only try and help you the best I can. Now, they were acting mad too, and they truly did not want to suffer the consequences of Scootaloo's destiny. But something was telling them that their friend needed help. They didn't know how to provide such help, but they were willing to try, following nothing but their hearts. It was stupid. It was literal suicide. But it worked. Scootaloo looked at them, trying to get where the trap was, but saw only caring and gentle looks from two ponies who were holding a very special place in her heart and soul. A part of the Pegasus was telling her to finish the work as soon as possible, as she was getting weaker by the second. She had every reason to finish them. They knew too much. They were compromising, and their suffering would give just so much to enjoy. Scootaloo could smell and taste the blood already, and that alone was intoxicating. But on the other side of things, a part of her was pulling her away, shouting and fighting with all her willpower to overcome her fears and just remind her of one simple fact. Just one day ago, she would have never done these things. I never would have. But she had done it in between, and there was no turning back. She had done something that had stained her for the rest of her life, that she could never repair or repay. She had no choice but to go along where her new destiny would take her. She truly had no choice. She had just ignored it until then, but it was becoming clearer and clearer. She fell on the floor and cried, defenseless, alone, and wishing for the nightmare to just stop. She felt two pairs of hooves comforting her. Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle exchanged a look. They were happy to still be able to see each other and feel each other. Happy to be able to enjoy the world for some more time. Still, they did not know what to do. It's okay. We are with you. I didn't want to. I never wanted to. I don't want to. I swear that I'd rather die myself than harm any pony anymore. And there was so much conviction in that voice, so much passion and authority that Destiny probably heard her in a faraway place where she hid and was probably afraid. Because when she glanced at it, Apple Bloom suddenly realized that Scootaloo's flank was blank, completely Blank. She made the other two fillies notice, but not one of the three could believe it. I... It's not possible! Opponent's cutie mark really can change! But Scootaloo did not rejoice with them. She just continued to cry, all withdrawn on herself. Her two friends understood. 
even if she was given a new chance to become some pony else. The past had not been altered. Some things could not be changed, even with all the willpower in Equestria and beyond. They hugged their Pegasus friend, and all cried together for some time. Then, when they had no more tears to spare, Apple Bloom decided to take the initiative. Skulu? Where is her body? What? We should go bury her. That's the least we owe her. And then what? Then what? Then... I don't know. I guess we'll keep on living. And whatever happens, we'll face it together. And being just fillies after way more emotions than they should have ever endured in their short lives, their hearts began to function normally again, telling them to just keep hoping for the best and never to expect the worst. Just as the sun outside announced the dawn of a new day. <laughs>